Well, I'm excited to get into the word tonight. I'm excited for what God's going to do. Come on, is anybody excited in the room? Wow. Could you believe it's September already? Brand new month. And I'm excited we're, we're, we're uh, continuing our series on what in the world is going on. And uh, Jose did an amazing job last week. Yeah, it was so awesome to have Jose with us last week. And we want to get into groups. We want to get moving. I know God's going to do something amazing in your life. But hey, I just want to say and encourage you with this is this upcoming Sunday. First of all, Sunday, at a, we have a service at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. And at 11 o'clock, we want to start to bring back all of our student section where we sit together. And so let me just encourage you to be looking in the left section. If you're facing the stage to the left side, we all want to sit together. We want to set the tone for our Sunday at 11 o'clock service. And I want to see you there. So I'm going to be looking for you this Sunday. It's going to be amazing. God's doing an amazing thing in our church right now. Are you all ready to get in the word? All right, let's go. Uh, what in the world is going on? How many have felt like that before where things are going crazy and going horrible and going bad? You know, we see it across our world right now as well as we see it in our nation. We see it uh, in St. Louis. We see it throughout the states. We see the difficulty, the challenge, the struggle. We see it in our homes. We see it in our neighborhoods. You know, I was just, just listening today and, and uh, heard a story about someone that was in a Starbucks line and someone cut somebody off and they were just yelling and started fighting and getting out of the car and just having a whole scene. People are just are on edge. People are, are dealing with stuff. And, you know, that's adults, but I know what's happening in schools. I know what's happening in, in students' lives and the pressure and the challenge, and some of us are like, how do we navigate this in 2021, just the way the world is? And so in this series, I, I wanna give you good news, I wanna give you hope, I wanna give you some practical steps, and, and expound on the word of God, and I feel like I have two texts tonight to talk about, and if we could go right to them real quick, I can't see it on this, the screen, but I'll watch it on this, Psalm 119, and, and I just want you to let the Holy Spirit speak to you. You know, let God speak to you as we read the word of God. How we hear God's voice is not uh, some loud voice. Hello, son, I am talking to you. We hear God's voice through his word. He's given us 66 books and his word is the Bible says it's health unto our, those that find them and life unto their flesh, meaning that it's health and it's life and, it, and, and it, there's some hope tonight. There's something that God wants to say and speak to your life. Come on, say, God has a word for me tonight. See, that it's great expectation right there. All right, so 107, it says, I'm bruised and broken, overwhelmed by it all. Been there, Right? Yeah, have we all felt like that at some point? Breathe life into me again by your living word. So how does he breathe life into us? Through his living word, through the scripture. His word, the Bible says, is a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. And it's to breathe life into us. Breathe life into us by living word. Lord, receive my grateful thanks. And look at this right here. Teach me more, teach me more of how to please you. Wow, hear me, Facebook and YouTube. Hear me, Zoom. This is so powerful right here. So it's, it's, it's saying, first of all, receive my grateful thanks. So if God wants to do something in your life and, and you want God to speak to you and you're going through a hard time, it's important that you identify his word, identify what he's saying, want to receive and learn from him, but also that you have an attitude of gratitude. Oh, that you find ways and find things that I'm thankful for. You know, I look around in this room and I'm, I'm thankful for, first of all, I'm thankful for our amazing dream team. I'm thankful for our small group leaders. I'm thankful for Lizzie in the back that keeps me on track with these, mess, with these verses. I'm thankful, so I'm so thankful for everybody on the team, the tech team. 
I'm thankful for our worship team. I'm thankful, and I can go down the list. I'm thankful that we have our own room. I'm thankful that it's not an echo while we're worshiping because I've done years with echo, okay? I'm thankful that we can control our lighting. I'm thankful for air conditioning. Come on, somebody. You know, eight years ago, we had, we had air conditionings. The air conditioning units that we had were so old that we couldn't keep it together. If you could ask Stephen, if I, I'm not lying, y'all, I'm not making this up. Some of the team that's been with us for a long time, they will tell you that we literally, Ryan knows about this, we literally would have to turn the air units and crank them on Tuesday morning, sometimes Monday night, just so that we can breathe on Wednesday night. I'm thankful for air conditioning units that work. I'm thankful. You know, we're, and we're, we've been given to that and uh, just about to pay that off just for these, for our services. And I'm thankful that they work. But I promise you, the ones we had were so jacked up. They were so messed up. I was sweating. I was, I mean, it was five o'clock. It wasn't even seven o'clock yet. I was sweating. I was sweating through all my clothes. Like, Lord, please. How, we had to put fans and blow it on people. Hey, but you know, when you've been through that, You're thankful for what God's blessed you with. Yeah, some of you, God's brought you through some stuff. You know, used to be an apartment, you're in a house. Used to to have this situation, now you have the, God's blessed you. And if you're not careful, you can actually take it for granted. Like, yeah, but everybody else has that. No, 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 you're not everybody else. And, And when you count your blessings and what God's done, and there's something that you could be thankful for. There's something that you can honor God. And when we come before God, God's looking for people that have a heart of gratitude. God's looking for people that are grateful. Do you know that God actually is not going to bless people that are like, give me, give me, give it to me. I deserve it. I'm entitled. God is actually looking for people that love him, that are after him, that are thankful for him, that are thankful for his blessings that are thankful for it, all that he's done for us. Oh, an attitude of posture is so key. All right, so let's go on. Teach me more. Oh, go, go back. I'm sorry. Teach me more of how to please you, even though my life hangs in the balance. Do you notice this right here? This is, they believe, uh, theologians believe this is David that is speaking right here, that his life is hanging in the balance. And David had a lot of moments where his life was hanging in the balance. But he said, teach me in his worst, darkest, most critical, difficult, his world's crashing down. He says, teach me more how to please you. Okay, next verse. I'll keep following what you've taught me, no matter what. Oh, I love that. Look at this right here. I'm going to say this. And when I point here, I want you to say these three words, no matter what. All right, let's do it. Let's do it together. I'll keep following what you've taught me through the pain and the suffering, through a terrible day at school, when my best friend betrays me, when finances are terrible at home. See the mentality that I'm going to keep following? Oh, that's, that's when you know that's true love. That's when you know it's true commitment. Anybody can serve God on a sunny day when everything is right. But when things are difficulty, when there's difficulty in your life, I keep following what you taught me. What you've taught me. That means I'm a lifelong learner. That means I'm going to keep following. A good leader is a good follower. Ooh. If you, if you, if you want to lead people, you want to be a good follower to what he tells you, where he leads you, where you follow. I love that. So then it says, the ungodly have done their best to throw me off track, but I'll not deviate from what you told me. Oh, but look at this though. You're going to have a tax. You're going to have people lie about you. You're going to have a teacher. You're going to have a situation, a family member, a disappointment. You're going to have people that's going to go after you, but you're not going to deviate from God's plan. Oh, I love that. I love it. Everything you speak is like a joyous treasure filling my life with gladness. Oh, I love that. Do we have any more? Oh, I love this right here. Look at this. This, is, this should be a life first for many of us in this room, really all of us. I have determined in my heart 
to obey whatever you say fully and forever. David said, if I die or I don't die, if it goes my way or it doesn't go my way, I have determined in my heart to obey. So I wanna give you four quick things. How do you deal with being overwhelmed? Number one, hear God's voice. Hear God's voice. How do you hear God's voice? I just taught you the very beginning by reading the word of God. That's how you hear God's voice. Number two, do whatever he tells you. Come on, you, you run into that where it's like you read, you read a scripture and then you're tested on the scripture, right? You, you, you read a scripture and it's about, um, it's about patience and then everybody in their mama is trying to test you on patience for the rest of the day. But you know what? When we do the little things, when we do the little things, God's watching the little things. God's watching if the trash is taken out or not. God's watching if you're stewarding your closet or not. God's watching if you'll spend just an extra five minutes in his word. Do whatever he tells you. You know, some of us, we're like, you know what? I'm gonna get real spiritual and I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna do an hour and I'm gonna do, quit with all that. Let's take some steps. Let's get some reps. Let's read his word every single day. Let's be consistent because consistency is, is the sign of maturity. It's the mark of maturity. Consistency, being consistent. What's another word for consistency? Faithfulness. You want to be full of faith? Then be consistent. Being full of faith is being faithful. Full of faith is not just being spiritual. Oh, I'm so spiritual and I have so much faith and I can believe God for anything. That's a lot of crap is what that is. Being faithful is being real and being consistent with your walk with God every single day. Hear me today, because this is important. We hear God's voice, number two, we do whatever he tells. I know a lot of people that know the word, but don't do the word. <laughs> There's a little big difference. I can know about a car, or I could have the car in the keys, and I could drive the car. There's a difference. You know, I can know about my homework, or I could do my homework. <laughs> right? I, just, just, just me knowing about it doesn't qualify anything. I can know about a, a subject and not study a subject and fail a subject. <laughs> None of you are going to do that in Jesus' name. But it's how important it is, is not just having theory and knowledge. There's a lot of people out there that can just have deep conversations, but they are not doing anything. And you know what? Don't feel overwhelmed like, well, I, I haven't done enough or I'm not spiritual enough. Just practical steps. I'm going to read my word. I'm going to spend some time praying. I'm going to pray for you if you ask for prayer. I'm not going to say I'm going to pray for you and not pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to fall through. Okay, so hearing God's voice, number one. Number two, do whatever he tells you. Then number three, Find things to thank God for. Woo. You hear the story about the, the lepers, how these lepers came to Jesus and all of them got healed, but only a few came back to show gratitude and thankfulness and say, God, thanks for healing me. We need to go back in our quiet time and say, wow, God, thank you that I have a bed. Wow, God, thank you that I got a ride today at church and I didn't walk 17 miles. Wow, God, thank you that I didn't, I, I wasn't an underground church in Afghanistan worrying that my church would be bombed today. Thank you for the freedoms that I have here in this nation. Instead of dogging this nation, bashing this nation, we should be thanking God that he's welcomed in this nation and that we have the freedoms in this nation. Whatever we don't celebrate, we lose. 
So we should celebrate the goodness of God. We should celebrate that he loves us. Well, well, my dad left, but you have an amazing mom that's holding it together, that's playing mom and dad. Well, this relationship didn't work. But but looking at the the perspective of, wow, God, you're in the middle of this mess. You're in the middle of this storm. You're in the middle of this trial. A lot of us, please hear me, Zoom, don't miss this. A lot of us, if we're not careful, we can look through, yeah, but this didn't do good, and this, this, and this, and look at this, and what's happening here, and all this nation's going to hell in a handbasket, da, 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 da. And we look at things all bad. Come on, we got we to gotta change our lenses. We got to start seeing, wow, God, I see you in the middle of this, even though I'm failing this grade. God, I see you. You're with me. You got me. I'm going to rebound because of you. Wow. That's talking about being faithful. So, all right, find things to thank God for. All right, let's go to the other scripture, and then we'll close, and someone can even play behind me. So now wrap your heart tightly around the hope that lives within us. Oh, this is so awesome. Knowing that God always keeps his promises. I've had, I've had a lot of people that have, have promised me things and not fallen through. Have you? Come on. Come on. We honest in this room. Come on. We, if, if we had a testimony service of everybody that screwed us over, come on. We could be like, oh, no point in nobody. But you'd be like, oh, yeah, I got, I got, I got, I don't have enough hands to tell you people that have promised and did not fall through. Do you know psychologically what that can do to you? When you expected something and it did not fall through and they didn't ever just say, hey, it didn't work out. They just didn't say anything. Some of us can even get a perception that God won't follow through because we've, we were looking at the lens through man and we think that God is like man. Bible says that God's not a man that he should lie. And he's not just man. (laughs) He came down as man, but he is God. And you know, one thing that God can't do is lie. So if he has promises, his promises will be fulfilled. He has 7,000. 7,000 promises for you. So you may not see him tomorrow, but it doesn't mean that they're not happening. They're going to happen. He's not a man that he should lie. Look what it says here. Knowing that God will always keep his promises. Discover creative ways to encourage others. That's where I wanted to kind of talk because you're about to go into small groups and you're going through, some of us are going through really difficult times. We have to get creative on encouraging each other. A self-serving life is always thinking about what is in it for me. But a servant life is thinking what is it in for everyone else. And boy, do we need each other. Oh my goodness. How could I have made it? I just think about my own life. How could I have made it in ministry? If there wasn't amazing voices that got creative enough to encourage me, a lot of of us are going through really hard things and we need to be creative enough to encourage each other and to motivate them toward the acts of compassion, doing beautiful works as expressions of love. Next verse. Look at this right here. This This is key because please, The world right now is missing it. There's people that have fallen away from the church because they don't understand this right here. This is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together. I'm so proud that you guys are here and those in Zoom and those watching Facebook and YouTube. As some have formed the habit of doing, so people are getting bad habits. It's crazy right now. Like you can go on vacation, you can go all these different places, but people have excuses down. And, 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 and please hear me. I'm not talking about like physical stuff, but I'm talking about just excuses for no reason to miss church. They'll, fi- they'll form a habit 
of missing being with brethren, being with brothers and sisters in Christ. In fact, we should come together even more frequently, eager to encourage and urge each other onward as we anticipate the day of dawning. This is so powerful. What is it saying? We need each other. And we need not just, not just anyone. Hey, come be in my group. Come, anyone. No, we need, we need specific people. Number four, we need to get faith friends and encourage each other. We need people that will believe with us. We don't need any more negative friends. Can I get an amen? We don't need any more critical friends. No, 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 no. We need faith-filled friends that will pray with each other, believe God with each other, encourage each other. We need it. We need it in a dark, depressing, discouraging world. We need encouragement. And that's why we go into groups. That's why we do this. So as, as, I, as I end tonight, would you just bow your heads with me? Close your eyes. And before we go any further, hearing God's voice is the most important thing. Many for you, maybe it's just relationship with God. And I want to say this with urgency. Please hear me because we're living in a final hour of time. I really believe it. I believe that we are living in the last days. Believe that biblically anything, there's nothing else that needs to happen. Like Jesus can come right now. You say, Mark, what do you mean when Jesus comes? Well, Jesus will come for his church and those that are ready and those that have relationship with him will meet him in the air, the Bible says. Those followers of Christ. And after that, this world's about to get really dark. We just talked about God's presence and God's presence is gone now. <laughs> this world's about to, you think it's dark now, it's gonna get real dark. But those that know him, those that have relationship with him, those that are walking with him, those that are right with him, they will meet him, and the Bible says, in the air. And will enter into heaven. Man, that time is, I mean, it's not, there's nothing that needs to happen biblically. Nothing that happens, everything, it could happen right, it could happen tonight. In fact, the Bible tells us actually that we should be praying, come quickly, Lord Jesus. You're like, no, but I just want to go to prom. <laughs> You're like, no, I just need a little bit more time. The Bible says that eternity waits for no man. And in fact, it actually says, the Apostle Paul says, declaring that today is the day of salvation, now is the appointed time, that it is important that we seize the moment. My question to you with heads bowed, eyes closed, not how long you've been going to Church in the Rock, I'm not asking you to join a church. I'm not asking if you've been baptized. I'm asking, do you know Jesus? If you died today or the rapture took place, are you ready? Would you meet him in the air? If you died today, would you hear God say, well done, my good and faithful servant? If you're not sure, if you're not ready, you can be ready. We're gonna pray a prayer. Heads are about eyes are closed. I'm not going to call anyone out. Those that are in Zoom, those that are on Facebook, those that are on YouTube, that's you. Don't miss the opportunity because the Bible says that eternity waits for no man. Today is the day. If that's you, just, just raise your hand right where you are. You say, Mark, I, I want to be right. I want to be ready. I want a relationship with Jesus. I need to know hands are going up. That's awesome. And I know in Zoom as well. All right, Uprising, let's stay with all those that are making a decision. Say, Heavenly Father, I repent. I believe that Jesus Christ died for me and rose again. Jesus, come into my life. I make you my Lord and my Savior. Take my life and make a difference. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, let's give God some praise.